the second session of day 12. It is hard to believe that we are well and truly over the top of the halfway hill and down the other side. And uh, after a great second, uh, after a great session with Rebecca Southern this morning, she has passed the baton on to Ingrid Mesner, who's going to talk us through what it means to be naturally successful. Um, I've known Ingrid for a couple of years now. She is the author of the book, Naturally Successful. Um, but she's also well known as a coach, facilitator, author and speaker who supports leaders and teams to optimise their positive impact, performance and well-being. Using a holistic and practical approach, she improves leadership effectiveness while connecting people back to nature and ancient wisdom. And I, Ingrid, I love this whole concept of naturally successful, especially when success mostly looks like profit and performance and results. So I can't wait to uh, get into your session and uh, hear more about the book. So thanks for this session and uh, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thanks Thanks for the intro, Julia, and, and thanks for having me. So in, in all my work, context matters a lot. So that's why I like to start actually to say, um, we are here at the VIT21 conference, uh, which has the topic of uh, shape your future. So my contribution to that is um, how could you do that in a naturally successful way? But I really like to acknowledge you, Julia, for creating the space where we, where we can find out what the future can look like during all the mess that is around us. So, <laughs> so it's uh, really taking a different perspective. So today's session will be a little bit me showing you some slides, um, asking some questions, um, making you hopefully reflect and do a few things. Um, but when you like and have a question, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, and so I will jump a little bit between showing you something, asking you something, telling you something. Um, so it's a bit of a mix of everything. So the as I said, shape your future is the framework. What we're going to look at is um, how to do that in a naturally successful way. But before we even start that, I'd like you to reflect a very brief moment on um, this. Hopefully you can read it. What are you excited about today? So maybe just a few words uh, in the chat box. Uh, what is it that excites you? Anything exciting so far? learning new concepts. Uh, I'm doing a keynote for real people on Thursday. <laughs> a real people, that, that's very much uh, what my work is about, like real relationship, real connection on a real stage, even better. Swimming in the rain, yes, that, that's a big one. What else? Uh, today I'm excited about the closure of my large project. We are celebrating and organizing everyone tomorrow. Celebration is a big one in systems thinking. Come back to that. It's like the proper acknowledgement of a beginning and an ending. Uh, congratulations. So means times of hmm, there are a lot of people swimming in New South Wales. Yes, there is. <laughs> so the Ancient Wisdom for Modern Leaders. Um, the book that I've written, Naturally Successful, is based on a lot of different things, but a lot of the insights and stories and things I'm sharing in the book actually came from time as then with indigenous people, and not only in Australia, but also in other countries. And what I learned from them were various different sources. So I went uh, to events with them. I watched lots of videos, read books, um, many, many conversations and reflections. So um, therefore, I really like to acknowledge um, the traditional owners of the land where I'm at the moment, which is the Darug people. This is also where most of my book was written on. and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. 
um, and any one of the indigenous people or First Nations people, as some prefer to say, who is here today, really primarily respect them. So basically, the ancient wisdom became um, important for me because I spent a lot of time in nature and learned to observe in different ways. And then combining that and with what I've experienced in my work in sustainability and in business and travel, all of these things together sort of felt like there's an underlying thread that runs through everything and that we somehow have forgotten. So when we think about the future today and how to shape it, it's sometimes good to go back to the roots and um, the timeless wisdom that has been there before, which basically in many wisdom traditions, it is the connection to nature because there's an assumption that you can only be healthy and happy and well if your surroundings, the environment and nature is healthy and happy and well. So you have to be in sync in a way with yourself, with other people and all the around uh, um, environments. So another piece of context is what, what we're experiencing today in the sustainability and social change space and the challenges we read about in the newspapers, and I'm sure you all have seen those, um, is business and society today, there's so much uh, it's even too difficult to think about. So it's very easy to lose optimism and hope. And some of the things have been around for a long time. So people who work in that space and actually get paid for making it better. Uh, they, they really become frustrated and overwhelmed and everything is urgent and there's so many different tasks. So they start to, in a way, suffer unnecessarily really because there are some things that can help, but um, they're not really seeing it anymore. So they, they want to do good for others and then in the process of doing that, they totally forget themselves they get really, really stressed out about everything and not noticing that if they just would take care of themselves a little bit more, it would be so much better. Then also, because it's so overwhelming and there's so many data around you, um, it's very, very difficult to actually see the forest for the trees. So you see so many tiny, tiny things and on your to-do list is so long. Uh, while you're also forgetting that there should be something like a to-be list. So we're forgetting that whatever we want to achieve as success or you want to create the future, which, which sort of um, is in your and there, you start here, but to get to there, to have a result, you have to do something, but to do something, you have to be in a certain way. And this is where the whole concept um, of the naturally successful mindset comes in. Before we come to that, with, with the context that I've sort of reminded you of, even if I have to remind you, um, there's another question I like to show to you and reflect on and pop in the chat box. Um, what is the cost for not noticing what matters? So what, what can you see? What does it cost us that we are not really noticing what's going on around us, in us, with other people? So what could be a cost for that? Uh, missed opportunities, says Lani. Uh, you can stress uh, relationships with others. Yes, Julia. And so internal health impact, uh, so, so that, that is actually a big one. I come back to that, it's a really, really important one. So what I described before uh, goes very long with that, the whole well-being space suffers. With the relationships, what Julia said, um, the, when you're not noticing what's going on with another person, you're actually missing the opportunity to influence the person. So like take them from where they are to another space. And obviously all of that is impacting um, performance. So the positive impact on others around you is gained when you notice. Perfect. I think I can stop the presentation now and let take suit over. <laughs> so that, that's the basic, um, concept really so there is a cost attached to not noticing in in the book um 
And with all the work I've done with clients over the last decade in sustainability and social change, there are sort of four different problem uh, areas popping up again and again. So the, the first one is very much connected to what we just said. There is a lot of stress. People have too much stress on themselves. The second one is frustration with difficult people. It's, it's always the other person that's difficult. It's, it's never me. So it's always the other person. Then uh, overwhelm because there's so much going on. There's a lot of noise that uh, people are really overwhelmed. And in sustainability, especially you have like 50 different stakeholders you have to be in contact with. Every one of that is quite different. They live in a different environment. They belong to different industry associations. So it's really three, three problems, too much stress, frustration with difficult people and the overwhelm. And then I came up actually with a fourth one that alludes to the uh, natural connection that I said before. Many of the people working in business and in organizations now are impacted with COVID, which is literally every organization. We lost connection to nature, the very thing that nurtures and supports us. So our bodies and minds haven't really evolved in the same speed as Facebook or Google or any technology for the sake of it. So we, we are not really noticing that while everything in Facebook world and social media is speeding up, our bodies actually can't speed up to the same level. So there is a difference between the speed. One is fast and one is sort of normal slow or whatever normal is, but it is a certain slower speed. So the discrepancy is that there is a loss of connection and that causes a lot of problems. So quite often you hear people talking about uh, nature is the answer. If you're stressed, just go out and go for a walk or meditate things. This is like all true, but it is piecemeal work and it's not really addressing the underlying cause. It's sort of a, like a bandaid you put on a heavily bleeding wound and it's not really um, the ultimate solution. It can give you some relief for the moment, but it's not um, necessarily going up. So there is um, what I say is the summary of the problems. It's, it's really, and, and the guy in the water, I think is a good image, <laughs> image for today, um, where everything is so wet in New South Wales in Australia. Uh, but basically, that's the metaphor for how it is to work out there. You're too stressed. Uh, you're really frustrated because there is no help. No one is supporting you. Um, the water is up to your neck, more or less. And uh, it's really overwhelming. And anyway, you might not have seen it coming because you didn't notice. So there was the loss of connection again. So you, you didn't notice what happened. So how did I get to this insight? As I said before, um, the, some of the insights came from client work, uh, learning from experts in their field. For example, I went to the Gross National Happiness Center in Bhutan, uh, where they have a very different way of measuring what success is with the National Happiness uh, Index, uh, where we measure GDP. So then a lot of time that I spent in nature and also from my own struggles uh, with health, uh, I had to, in a way, relearn to notice what matters. So what, what, what you can see on the photos there is uh, just a reminder, uh, everything is well. And I go hiking quite regularly with a group of women. And quite often we go out in, in any weather, really any time of the day. And so three and a half years ago, we went uh, during a night walk in the bush and um, I broke my knee. So that... Um, to break your knee sounds like yeah, it's another break, broken bone, but it's actually a lot more because the lower part of your knee, which is called tibia plateau, carries like seven to ten times your body weight when you walk or jump. So if that sort of breaks, it's, it's not a good thing. And the rehab is quite long and quite complicated and um, <clears throat> not everyone can walk after this again. So I, I, I lost the ability to walk for several weeks. I was in a wheelchair and then had to rehab. And the reason why I'm saying that is 
I went to the, I got to the hospital, I got surgery, and then the surgeon said, oh, go and see the physio in a week or so. And, and that was all the recommendation I got. So that, that was a little bit, and I had a really good surgeon, but it didn't really help me to understand like the whole healthcare system and what would I need to recover from that, how to make the situation better. There was nothing really that someone told me about. Uh, you need certain type of nutrition. Uh, you need sleep, rest. Um, you might need different types of movement to go out in nature actually, or even look out of the window and see some green helps. Um, uh, you need a support team because uh, you can't really do a lot for many weeks. Um, so, and then all sorts of these other things. So I went through all of this and I rediscovered um, different elements one after the other, but was frustrated that there wasn't anyone helping me to navigate the whole system. And I also realized this healing is not like a one dimensional linear thing. It's, it's really connected. And so after about three months or so, I woke up uh, one night and, and in the morning I thought, oh my God, <clears throat> this is a system. And I sat down and screwed it all down. It's like, it's connected to me, it's connected to other people and the whole environment. And then when I looked at it, it said, actually, that's the same as in business and leadership, because it means I lead myself, be accountable to myself to do all whatever I can do to be well. Then I lead others um, because you have to have a team of health professionals and other support people, so you lead others. And you have to be very aware of the context, how I started today, because Context matters heavily, um, like where you live, what, what are your means, what is the healthcare system where you live. I became part of a Facebook group, um, which I usually not do, but in this case, it was really helpful because um, there were people from all over the world who have the same injury, uh, which is quite rare. Then uh, the exchange between people in different countries just makes you aware how much context matters because in the US, and the same type of surgery would cost something like two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars, whereas in Australia you pay I don't know nearly nothing. And uh, so there is uh, quite a big difference also on what is your family system around you, your friends, and um, generally. So there, there were all these elements that I thought they are relevant for the recovery, but actually there came a lot of leadership lessons that I applied then in my work uh, with my clients. So basically to, to, to summarize it, there were three areas. The first one that I noticed um, with self, so when you lead yourself in an organization, you can only really give what you have got. So the way how you show up as a leader is key. If you are grumpy <laughs> and sad and not organized and everything, you, you can't expect your team to be very excited. So that's definitely something to consider. Next one is um, all the people around you, you need others with stakeholders. So to influence and activate the best in them, you first have to make an effort to truly understand who they are as a person, build trust and the relationships and um, really connect more deeply with them. And the third one is uh, all the systems around you. It's where you think about how can I use this context to be my guide? So this, this guy there in the white water rafting. So for a part, the river will be quite wide as you can see on the photo, but then there will be areas where it flows a lot slower. And then there's time to reflect and maybe plan again. So there's different speeds and different um, requirements of your skills. So this looks like it has to be a real professional to navigate it. I, I wouldn't look like that. I would be upside down. But uh, there is a, a, a slower area where you can actually say, oh, OK, I can enjoy the landscape and uh, think about where next. And then it becomes rapid again. So it's really important to remember the context. Then 
as the sum of all of that, what I put them in the book, this, the model taken from the book, uh, successes in the system. So the naturally successful mindset, what I call it, is literally the integration of the three bubbles um, that you can see. Uh, underlying everything is like the how are you connected to yourself and then how you connected to stakeholders, how you connected to systems. When you bring your perspective of the three bubbles or circles together, um, this is where it becomes naturally successful because you will feel more energized, influential and impactful. So with the three areas that I have said now a few times is, is really within them, there are three different leadership practices that happen in all three areas. And it's basically that before you get to anything, you have to connect, so be aware of what's happening. Then you really have to care that really you want to action on it. it. It matters to you. And then commit is committing to accountability and an outcome. So connect, care, commit is basically um, required for self, required for stakeholders and required for systems. So when you put that together, uh, you get to like three by three, so nine leadership skills that make you naturally successful. Uh, because we have only limited time today, I thought I'd just sort of focus on the connect part. Um, and this is very much about awareness and noticing what, what really matters, how I started today. This is really um, how, what do you notice for yourself? What do you notice with other people? What do you notice in the system? And each of the nine boxes is a chapter in my book. And at, at the very end, I give you a link um, where you can download a free uh, summary of that so that you get all nine. But for today, we focus really on self-awareness, communication and context awareness. And the self-awareness is um, where it all starts, where many people would call that mindfulness. So you're mindful about what's happening in the moment. But I like to challenge that a bit, the notion that it's just about the present moment, because um, when you think back what we said in the beginning with the context, all the um, sort of challenging news and um, the noise around us, by now our senses have gone down a bit and numbed down because if our senses would pick up on everything in the environment <laughs> with the noise around us, uh, we would literally go crazy. So what, what happens is then, on the other hand, we, we numb down too much, so we're actually not noticing anymore. So what it means, basically, we knew what to do, but now we have to relearn it and fine tune our senses again, because basically what, what mindfulness is, is using all your, your five senses, uh, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling, um, to notice what, what's going around you. But there, there are other ways also how you can connect where you think about a certain thing or you get emotional, or you notice there's some movement and some balance and um, other connection points. For example, your body also connects and gets energy from, from food. So what I like to point out, one of the self-awareness practices um, is actually this, <laughs> what some of you might do already, it's like a gratitude journal. And sometimes we think how oh, easy is, I just write it down and it's about thinking. And in a way we are missing the point because what, what you write down is um, you're having something, so it's a result. But as I said before, when you have something, there's a doing before. And before the doing is a being. and Sometimes the being feels very soft and not very effective. But for example, with this small exercise, what's proven to be uh, when you focus on something that excites you and you're grateful for it, it actually releases dopamine in your brain. 
which then has got an impact on your energy levels. And it's proven to be now with research that it has also got an impact on your immune system. So with the immune system, meaning that's a very specific outcome, a physical outcome of a thought process. Just by me asking you in the beginning, um, what are you excited about? If you would do that like every day, in a way you're supporting your immune system to make you feel better, be more energized. Um, it also does things like it lowers blood pressure. So for some people that's really interesting and it, it drops uh, stress hormones. Um, it, optimizes other hormone levels and it increases actually the capacity to be present because for that moment in time you stop and think ah what is it actually i'm excited about today and then sometimes you can sense where in my body do i feel it but the feeling bit then sort of gets translated into a physical manifestation which we forget because it might feel a bit fluffy to write it down, but it's a very, very specific benefit to it. The next one, it's more, more of a metaphor. I think you can see this, uh, or people who might not see, it's a mint plant in a pot. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> So in many of my workshops, I actually used that for quite a long time for an exercise, because even though it's a small thing and doesn't feel like much, but you could spend hours with this and it would never get boring once you get the hang on it. And it just stands for a lot. So whatever sort of you start to notice, if you only use your five senses, and I think all of you, um, you might not have a plant next to you, but if uh, later on you have a plant or even mint, you could go and say, uh, okay, how does it look? How does it feel by, by touching the leaves? How does it taste? Luckily you can eat mint leaves. <laughs> um, how does it smell? The smell, for example, in itself, the um, essential oils that it emits um, work on your brain and make your thinking a bit clearer. So, and then uh, how does it really appear? What does it stand for? And reflecting then also, okay, you see the plan now, when you think of, for example, projects at work, you look at them at a certain point in time, it's a snapshot, but they actually there was something before that might have worked or went wrong. So that uh, explains the situation you're in and the project at the moment. Or you know in the future this and that will happen. So same with the mint plant. This mint plant at this point in time, it's like a snapshot because before it was seeds, water, sunshine, uh, hopefully a little bit care and love <laughs> to grow. And so that, that's all in there. And at the moment, um, this plant here is a bit lonely because it's just one pot and doesn't have other plants around it. Um, so there is a good metaphor also when you work with other people to think about where all these other connection points also in time and in place something quite often forgotten when you think of other people. So if, for example, you meet a person in a certain context, um, you connect in a certain way then, and then next time you see the person out of context, for example, you meet someone at work and then you meet them at sport in the gym, uh, it's a totally different conversation you might have. So it's, it's worthwhile. In a way, the mint plant for me is always a good reminder because the, the smell is really nice and uh, energizing, uplifting. So for me, there, there are so many things in this. Um, but also one other thing I learned from um, the weekend I spent with an indigenous elder where he made us do a walk up the mountain where he said, um, it might be that you know the plants with the name they are going to see, but refrain from labeling them. 
So th this here obviously is from Bunnings. <laughs> um, so it has got a label. Um, but what would happen if you remove the label and just see the plan for what it is? So you give yourself a chance um, to really notice what matters. The same is for people at work. Uh, so often people have different roles. Um, the role literally is a label, like, literally more or less like this. But there is, um, here's the plan behind it. At work, there is the person behind it. So for example, think of a CEO. Do you respect the person or you do you respect the role? Or in a project, when you work with someone, what is it you respect? And then the thing is, um, there's certain energies that come with either the role or the person. So it's really worthwhile if you want to, what I call naturally successful, be more, then there needs to be some sort of respectful relationship with the origin, like the person, or in this case with the plant, and be aware of that. And this is where I said before, I have the sense that we have to relearn to notice what matters, because in this case, actually, it doesn't really matter whether it's called mint or blah, blah. Uh, it, it's the same plant. So it will still have the same properties. Uh, all the label does and roles at work do, they are like a shortcut, like a brand uh, name where you know, okay, if you buy Coca-Cola, you know roughly how it tastes. That's the same uh, with the mint plant. You have an idea. So we call it mint, so we know, okay, that's roughly a mint plant. And see oh you know roughly okay you can respect um, expect he has got or she has got this and that um, possibilities of taking decisions that have an impact but only if sort of the person behind the role and the role match and uh, the person shows up that sort of matches the role this is where things start to flow and are in sync so that's um, sort of good reminder that was sort of uh, how to connect with a person. Next one you hopefully see is um, lots of green and a few colored dots. Um, these photos were taken in Tasmania in the Tarkine, the rainforest in the northwest, um, where um, my husband and I did a walk, a six day walk, a few weeks ago. And what, what I experienced again is uh, our group had sort of two types of speeds. One part of the group was very, very fast and the other part was a bit slower. So what happened is on the left-hand side, you see this um, chaos and green. This is most of the time what, what, the green, what the fast people saw because they were so fast, they were literally running through. Um, the forest. And then uh, I was more interested into what, what is there in terms of fungi and other plants. Uh, and all of these photos on the right, um, there are different types of fungi and or mushrooms or whatever you call them, but um, they are very, very colorful and they're a little bit like a great bear reef, all the corals on the forest floor. They're very, very colorful, but they're also very, very small. They're tiny. They're sometimes just like less than a centimeter and they're not like in huge numbers all the time so you really have to look and you already only can see them once sort of you slow down and you scan the area a little bit while you're walking which is a bit complicated because there is no real trail so you have to see where you are and where to go next by looking for some more, very small pink ribbons and then at the same time, you notice more and more, okay, this is really interesting. There are so many different things out there. Plus you also over time getting more and more into the environment, more connected because you breathe in all the air that comes from the trees. You go and drink the water from the rivers. So you, you, you become more and more one uh, with it and you notice more what is sort of the characteristic of the system. Whereas if you rush through, um, it's very hard to say. Similar thing when you come into an organization and um, work and the culture can look more like the green 
or you notice and take time and have conversations and really get into it and uh, emerge, then that might be look, looking more like the colorful little dots when you realize are oh, these things are happening around here. So the, the, what I said before with, with time and speed actually makes a big difference. And with the uh, rush around us and the urgency and um, the pressure to deliver certain KPIs and be on budget and time and all of that, we sometimes forget to sort of just stop and reflect and pause and notice what's, what's happening around it. So the, the noticing what matters is, in a way, I think a skill that we could all do with um, to do more of. What I notice is the self-awareness and the system awareness are important because uh, as you can see on the slide, um, on the screen, or um, if you're only listening in, it's like a domino effect. So when you push the domino um, things in one area, and it might be that they go around and fall back onto you if you're not really noticing what's happening around you and where you're pushing. And so the whole message around uh, being aware of what's happening in yourself and other people and in the system around you is it gives you an opportunity to notice where you would have the biggest lever for change that creates a positive impact and that really matters. Otherwise, you might invest all your energy, time and money into an area where actually it doesn't matter or it doesn't really create an impact. And it is maybe because you rush through, you're very action oriented, which all is good and it's needed. However, it has to be complemented by this moment where you take a step back and say, okay, let's think about it. What matters? And what am I noticing? And where's this tiny point where my uh, work can make the biggest impact? So, in summary, um, if you are interested in the six other key skills, um, go and download two free chapters of my book. It explains the whole system and all the skills. Um, the website address is www.ingridmesner.com slash toolkit stroke order. So toolkit hyphen order. So um, that's where you can get like the overview of the whole system and everything uh, I've talked about. And hopefully there were a few things in there that you find of value and make you think. So I'm wondering what might be supporting you to shape your future in a more naturally successful way.